the following episode of Dave's Video Graveyard contains spoilers and naughty words. Listener discretion is advised. Have you ever bought or rented a videotape that wasn't quite right? It may have been a pirate copy. Writing's advice. Use it. It's on every... That guy in a little coat. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. I'm not a smart man. <laughs> Shut up! One cubit cubby! What's wrong with him? My first thought would be a lot. Why so serious? Wise men say forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. Hail to the king, baby. Hey, Ma! The meatloaf! We want it now! The meatloaf! Of all the radio shows in the world, this is definitely one of them. Dave's Video Graveyard on 100.5 Wow FM. Okay. You people sit tight, hold the fort, and keep the home fires burning. And if we're not back by dawn, call the president. It is 100.5 WOW FM, Dave's video graveyard. A massive pleasure to be back with you. And starting things off with an apology. I have been out of the studio for two weeks because uh, I had a little bit of fat boy asthma, but I'm much, much better. Things are going well, and it is time to get back into things. And this evening, we have a very special evening lined up. It is a mixed bag special where we're bringing you a whole heap of movie recommendations. And joining me this evening is two of my all-time favorite DVG All-Stars. We are joined by absolute superstar of the burlesque scene. There is no one hotter at the moment than Scarlett Santanico. And also joining us, one of someone that taught me to enjoy poetry. I've never enjoyed it before. However, life changed the night I heard poetry from our other guest this evening, Madeline Belladonna. Ladies, how are you? Good, good. Happy to be here again. We can't have done too bad last time because you've both made the mistake of returning. So how have things been? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, what about, what about you, Brit? Or do I call you Brit or Scarlett? Oh, that's a hard one. I probably should just say Scarlett. You should definitely ask on live radio. (laughs) You need consent from me. Thank you. And I'm going to say Scarlett because that's, you know, that's my persona online. So we'll run with Scarlett. In in professional wrestling, that's known as kayfabe. And it's one of the big (laughs) no-nos is to say someone's real name without checking. Yeah, thanks for that. Have now you just I can name have people shame? find me. <laughs> so what's been going on? How's life going? We'll start with you, Scarlett. Last yep. time we spoke, you were uncomfortable with the title of burlesque artist. However, you've gone from strength to strength since we last met. <laughs> well, I'm still a little bit uncomfortable with that term, burlesque artist, but it is what I am now. Um, it's been really amazing. Like It's been a really busy past month or so. Um, I won a little competition, so that was pretty special. Come on, name drop, humble uh, brag, let's hear it. I should, I really should, because I should be promoting The Apprentice South Australia. Yep. So took out the title for that. Um, that was really exciting. And um, you can catch me at 1910 Burlesque and Jazz Bar in town every other weekend. And uh, I've done, what, have, what else have I done? Charity, little charity event. Yeah. Uh, Lucky Dip Tees. Yeah, whole yes. yeah. bunch. I'm um, sorry, you headlined. Like you I did headlined. Tease. Yes, that's an important thing. Shout out to thing. very close friend of the yeah. show, Moisty Magic. Yeah, hey Moisty, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. If you're listening, she won't be. No, <laughs> she'll, she'll she pretend- might. Know, just like pottering around, um, trying to work on my poetry. You know, um, I did actually uh, enter a poetry competition like uh, last. Last week it That's was. That's a huge step forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like it, it was the spoken word like slam poetry thing they have or something. And I thought, you know what, let's just give it a go. And um, I didn't get a place, but like 
um, I was happy to be Still involved. Good experience. Yeah. But you've got a place in everyone's heart. So yes. That's all that matters. I hope so. <laughs> Every time someone mentions slam poetry, have you ever seen the film So I Married an Axe Murderer? No. Oh. It's got Mike Myers from oh. Austin yeah, Powers when, really when he was very yeah. younger. And he's a slam poet, and it's oh, very right. like oh, wow. uh, beatnik, bohemian, like yeah. everyone clicks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he gets up and does this poem every time, and that's instantly what I think of. That yeah. or um, from Twenty Two Jump Street. Yeah, they're at right. a, a yes. poetry competition, <laughs> and they ask for people to yell out stuff. <laughs> and Shannon Tating's in the um, audience, just going tampon. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what I think. Of. I'd definitely love to get along one time and check out what's happening. Yeah. So hurry up and win one so I can uh, <laughs> that would be great. take credit yeah. for your success. <laughs> <laughs> so this evening we're going to be going through a whole heap of film suggestions. It's, uh, there's no rhyme or reason to the tonight's list. It's basically we've all picked some films that we're going to suggest for people to check out. And of course, people, while they're checking things out, they can follow you guys on social media. What's the best yeah. way of doing that? Um, for me, Scarlet Santanico on Instagram is probably where I am uh, most. I believe it's Scarlet Santanico 666, <laughs> in case you needed help finding that. Don't look me up on Facebook, please. <laughs> and uh, the OF is currently inactive, so, you know, you can still t- jump on and support there. <laughs> Taking donations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Madeline. Um, yeah, I'm the same, like, yeah, on Instagram. Um, I'm under Madeline Bell Donna. Um, or, you know, I'm just I'm just Madeline Donna. That's my name, but. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wear it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got, uh, if you go onto, yeah, my, my um, like, my page on Instagram, I've also got a, a poetry page that you can find on there too if you want to read all of my um, naughty um, sexy words. So, <laughs> bone of poetry, lady. Bone of poetry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, let's jump into a little bit of music before we start this evening's list. Don't forget, you can join in the conversation via social media. This is Dave's video graveyard. <laughs> It is Dave's Video Graveyard as we kick off this evening's Mix Bag episode. And the first choice this evening comes from the lovely Madeline Donna. Why have you chosen the movie Warm Bodies from 2013? Okay, well, this movie, um, I just revisited it recently. And, um, like, I'm not not normally, like, a zombie movie person, um, but I'm a sucker for this one because it's a zombie love story. <laughs> and I suppose it doesn't hurt that the zombie's quite hot in this. Yeah, he's, he's a bit of a babe. He's a bit of a babe, <laughs> even though he's dead. So the story is, after a highly unusual zombie saves a still-living girl from an attack, the two form a relationship that sets in motion events that might transform the entire lifeless world. So essentially, uh, we find out that zombies in this movie actually eat people because they love the feeling of memories that they get from the people yes, they eat. Yes, So that's a cool little bit of a spin on the story. And he actually eats um, Dave Franco's character, which is the boyfriend <laughs> of the main girl, at which point he sees how much Dave Franco loves his girlfriend and he instantly falls in love with the uh, main girl in it. And it's quite funny because that makes his heart beat once. Yeah, and that's what starts the transition, and it's essentially a reverse zombie because he starts to become the more in love he falls, the more human he becomes. Yeah. Um, I absolutely love the setup. There's a little bit of wish fulfillment in this movie for me, like you know when you see movies that are like set after the apocalypse and you see how people live. I love that the zombie lives on his own plane and he collects stuff and takes it back to his own plane that he lives on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. Um, it's also essentially Romeo and Juliet retold. Right, yeah, uh, basically. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, yeah. So you've only seen it a couple of times? Yeah, I think I've only seen it twice, but I thought, like, when I I watched it again, I'm like, you know what, everyone's going to see this movie. Like, if, you know, because, um, yeah, if, and especially if you like zombie movies, you've got, you've got to give this one a go. You've yep. got to. Like, I know it's quite an old movie, but, like, I'm when not... I was actually surprised. 2013, this yeah, one. Wow. Yeah, wow. That's yeah. ages ago. And one thing I, I really... This comes up for me every time I talk about Shaun of the Dead because that's a Ooh, romantic that's comedy yeah. With, yeah. Zombies. with zombies. And so is this. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. they've tried, you know, 
I remember when there was like four zombie movies in the 90s and now it's like every <laughs> second week, a here's the new zombie <laughs> TV show. Yeah. Um, so it's cool Sign. when there are those original <laughs> little spins on it. And this one does it so well because the romantic comedy side doesn't take away from the zombie side and the zombie side doesn't yeah. take away from that side. Um, it's got some amazing... Um, I really like the the way they do the juxtaposition of... They show the world before the zombie apocalypse and because everyone's on their phone and not paying attention, mm. nothing changes when they become mm-hmm. zombies mm-hmm. and it cuts to them after the apocalypse and everyone's still looking down and not like yeah. talking to each yeah. other. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen this one? I've seen it like once or twice maybe a while ago. I need to revisit it too though. I should. Yes, you do. <laughs> Another sappy love story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if I'm not wrong, I believe Teresa Palmer is an Aussie actor. Uh, she is, yeah. Yes. Mercedes College. She's from Adelaide. Oh, she's from Adelaide. There you go. Well, there that you is go. Right. Adelaide Proud. Yeah. Ooh. Actually, um, she, I used to work at a, like a vegan restaurant and she came in there a couple of times. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And it was like, ooh, starstruck. Like I, I, I couldn't, <laughs> I didn't really know who she was, but um, yeah, a couple of people I worked with. Um, I wonder what yeah, else she's that, been that's in. That's an actress. Funnily yeah. enough, I mix her up with um, mm-hmm. Samara Weaving, the other really oh. famous actor from Adelaide that's doing really well at the moment. Okay. She's in a whole heap of stuff. Um, let's see. She was in Wolf Creek when she was still in oh, yeah. thing, oh, the right. second Grudge movie. Yeah. Uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice with <laughs> Nicolas Cage. I'm number <laughs> no. four. I'm number four was good, I think. Warm Bodies and mm. the remake of Point Break, which is terrible. I have not seen that. Um, don't bother. <laughs> Hacksaw Ridge, no, which to... is the Mel Gibson directed war movie. So, yeah, she's Mel and Ride Like a Girl is a pretty good Aussie movie oh, about the uh, Melbourne Cup. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That I she think that perhaps she's brunette in a lot of her other movies as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, she doesn't really look familiar to me. All the, pictures are, all the pictures are from uh, Warm Bodies. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so that is our first suggestion this evening. You can check that one out. I'm pretty sure it's streaming on both Stan and Netflix at the moment. So uh, do yourself a favour and check that one out. Don't forget, you can join in the conversation. Send us a message, Dave's Video Graveyard at WOW FM. Now let's get back into things with a bit more music. This is 100.5 WOW FM. <laughs> But I think that the music was a little loud. Are you afraid of it? No. I I just don't like techno. You would if you had robot ears. All the movies, none of the knowledge. This is Dave's Video Graveyard on 100.5 WOW FM. I hate your face. Did you say something? It is a double trouble episode of DVG this evening as I'm joined by two sisters that are ganging up on me and (laughs) bullying me while the songs are on. I will be putting in a lot of complaints. They're using my real name, Dave, and it's just ruining everything this evening. We are going through a mixed bag of movies this evening and it is time for Scarlett to touch upon her first choice from 2009, directed by Terry Gilliam, famous for all his work with Monty Python and a whole heap of other stuff. The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus from 2009, the final film of Heath Ledger. Why did you choose this weird movie? This weird (laughs) movie. Maybe because I am weird. Um, (laughs) Just a bit. (laughs) Probably. Um, No, I've been, I actually didn't realise it was from 2009. It was that far back. But I've been just, yeah, revisiting a lot of old movies recently. And this one's obviously like jam pack full of some really good actors. And we were just discussing that on break earlier. Um, The first time I watched this, it was a little bit too... Um, yeah, a bit too weird for me. Wanky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah wanky. <laughs> it's really out there. It's really out there. It's probably one of those movies that you need to watch like maybe, yeah, twice through to actually get what's going on. Um, but it's really good. Like I said, all great actors and the last movie, movie of Heath Ledger, if you're a Heath Ledger fan. And who isn't? I mean, Who isn't? On. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was actually watching a making of, unrelated to this or kind of related um, the making of the movie Brothers, which stars uh, Natalie Portman, yes. Jake Gyllenhaal, yes. and I think um, it's Toby, Toby Maguire. Yeah. While they were shooting that is when Jake actually, the day he had to find out that the character in the movie's passed away and oh. had to react to it, he found out about 
Heath Ledger. Oh, wow. wow. And he's like, listen, I'm going to take a month off because yeah. I'm not in the space mm-hmm. to full on. that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Unrelated, but yeah, it's such yeah. a shame. And revisiting all this stuff with Heath Ledger, you mm. really see how many amazing roles were kind of robbed yeah. off. Like you could see the trajectory of who he was going to be. He was going to be, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, he was fantastic then. And we've all spoken mm. many a times about 10 things I hate about you. Yes. He was perfect then. And he, he just got better and better. Yeah. So, yeah, from the director of pretty much everything Monty Python ever did. And it definitely shows in the visual flair of this movie mm. um, because it's super weird. <laughs> it's super weird. And for those that don't know, because of the passing of Heath Ledger, the character was rewritten in a way that he would essentially um, reincarnate throughout the movie. So that's how they kind of tied in the constant changing actor. Yeah. Replacing uh, Heath Ledger. Yeah. I haven't actually seen this one. Oh, you've never seen the no. movie? I was going to oh, say, yeah. <laughs> reincarnate might not necessarily be the word you'd use. Well, correct it's me. Such a, look, it's such a weird, because <laughs> I was watching it again the other day, and I'm like, it's such a weird thing what happens. And so the idea is like this Dr. Parnassus or whatever, um, these uh, you, you go inside his mind um, and what happens is Heath Ledger's character, every time he goes in his mind, he's a different version. So he's whoever plays him. Uh, he's got Johnny Depp. Yeah. Um, who else plays him in it? Um, Jude Law. Is Jude he Law it? is one of yeah. them. And the other one. Christopher Plummer. Yeah. The old fella so, from heaps of stuff. Yeah. Mm. So it's... Um, not really reincarnation. It's different versions of him. Well, it's thank you for film broing me. <laughs> <laughs> as, you, as you push your thick spectacles up, you know, he's like, well, actually. Excuse me. It's actually, actually not the word for it. But no, it is a really out there and like outside the box type thinking movie. Mm. And anyone wanting to check this one out, I know for a fact it is on SBS On Demand as we speak. Um, because it's in, it's probably the only one in Art House at the moment because mm. I go through all the categories and I'm like, what am I not going to watch? Yeah. Let's see what's in Art House. Uh, um, and yeah. Tom Waits, obviously, we were mentioning before, makes a little, well, not, it's not even a small appearance. Tom Waits is actually the devil in this. <laughs> So Dr. Parnassus makes like a deal don't with... Don't you find out that's how Parnassus got the Imaginarium was selling yeah. his soul to the devil? Yeah, yeah. Right. I believe it's for a chance at love. Of course. Oh. Of course. There's going to be a little bit of love in there. <laughs> There's love in every movie, I swear. There's always a love story in there. Awesome. Mm. And how often do you revisit this one? Um... I've revisited this quite a few times recently, actually, because, like I said, it's one of those movies you do need to watch a couple of times to get. So, oh, bloody da! Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got to give it like a, a second chance. You do. <laughs> awesome. Do you love all of Heath Ledger's movies? I do. Yeah. Actually, um, off the topic of Heath Ledger, is it? Yeah, Andrew Garfield as well. I've started the getting amazing into. Amazing Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't. Uh, again, like I revisited this movie and I'm like, oh, he's in it. I reckon oh. that's how I came back to it recently because I was like, I'm gonna start looking up some of his movies because I got a bit of a soft spot for him lately. <laughs> and uh, yeah, forgot he was in that. But yeah, he's actually a really good actor as well. Nice. He's also in the Mel Gibson directed Hacksaw Ridge. Ah. So all the movies tie it together. Wow. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Um, Funny that. Yeah, him and Teresa Palmer. So I haven't seen that one. Oh, Hacksaw yeah. Ridge. Yeah, I don't like war movies. So no, I'm not, not a huge me. war movie fan. But obviously, yeah, The Amazing Spider-Man is where it all started off for me. He got to be amazing. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he was He's a bit film. cute. He's a bit cute. He's a bit cute in a <laughs> dorky kind of yeah. Way. And we all love a bit of a, a bit of a dorky kind yeah. of guy, right? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Not for me, but I believe oh, you. You don't I'll like believe. the dorky guys? <laughs> nah. No. I'm all about the overweight gingers. <laughs> they're, the, they're the peak fitness yes. and attractiveness. Yes. No, Massive awesome. ten out of ten. Awesome. Let's hear a little bit more music. This is 100.5 Wow FM. What were they, psychos? Or? They look like psychos. Is that what they look like? They were vampires. Psychos do not explode when sunlight hits them. I don't give up how crazy they are. Talking movies on the radio. This is Dave's Video Graveyard on 100.5 Wow FM. Only after 
if nothing else explains why I haven't seen the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, my first choice this evening should let you know that perhaps I'm into a way higher class of film. <laughs> From 1991, I have chosen Brian Bosworth's Stone Cold. Now, Brian Bosworth was a very famous gridiron player. I didn't know because, you, you know, Australia never cared about gridiron no. whatsoever. So... He decided that it was time for him to become the next big action star. He was going to be the next big Schwarzenegger. Yeah, All he needed right. was the perfect film. And what we got was the R-rated Stone Cold featuring Brian Bosworth as a policeman with the greatest mullet. Like a lot of people talk about the mullet that uh, Mel Gibson rocks in Lethal Weapon. It goes nowhere near the blonde-tipped, amazing mullet of Mr. Bosworth himself. He goes undercover in a bike gang trying to discover um, the next shipment of like a big... It's also got that 1990s action movie where they just make up a drug. Like, it's the new, <laughs> it's the new dangerous drug and it's like just in a vial and it's like a weird colour. And oh So he has to infiltrate the biker gang and um, some of the bikers discover that he's a policeman so he has to kill them. Right. Um, the amount of people that get shot in this movie that end up flying out of a high-rise window <laughs> and falling, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where every... Every vehicle that gets shot with a gun explodes. Um, oh my God. It's an art. It's an art house classic, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I had right. never seen this movie, but um, I was taking a few notes when I was watching it. And like, if you were, if someone was to find the notes I was taking watching the movie, they'd think that I was like a bigger creep than I actually am. <laughs> because it's like man killed boobs, man killed boobs, <laughs> man killed boobs. Classic. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, <laughs> check out Stone right. Cold. Now, am I to die of shock and find out that neither of you have seen this movie? Oh, never in my <laughs> never. life. I've never I even heard this? of the guy, the actor. No, no. Well, it, unfortunately, <laughs> it didn't do... Uh, critics weren't very kind to Stone Cold okay. and it didn't do very well. So it uh, it never launched this career. But I'll but show I mean, you the photo here. Yeah, these photos. Oh my God. Now, like. this scene, I'll, I'll set it up for you. So the photo, for those listening, is Brian Bosworth airborne in front of a car. This is actually the mafia coming at him because they also want the drugs as well. <laughs> he, in this moment, is jumping. He manages to get his feet up under himself and kick through the windscreen and kill the man driving the car with his From feet. From this position. From this position wow. you see here. So... Uh, uh, look at that. That's like, does amazing. this photo not sell this movie yeah. to you? Yeah, it's him on his awesome, Harley mate. Davidson. Um, and there is also a scene at the end of the movie where he jumps from a helicopter through a glass skylight <laughs> and lands on one of the bad guys to defeat him. Wow. So, <laughs> so this guy can just do it all. Uh, it is the most oh. mindless action movie. Like, it's it's almost like, because I, I saw it in the context of 2021. So obviously yep. it's not 1991 when I'm watching this. It is so dumb, <laughs> but it actually makes you miss when movies like they didn't yeah. need to, they didn't, they had enough idea to just make the movie and it is so stupid Yeah, and I love it so much. And every, it just worked. Ev every guns are like machine gun, every, like everyone's got a bazooka, everyone's, <laughs> it's just, it reminded me, you know, uh, in the Simpsons, Mick Bain, the, the, yeah. um, mm -hmm. the cartoon character that's like meant to be Schwarzenegger. That's how silly this movie gets. <laughs> but at the whole time, it doesn't wow. act like it's silly. Um, there's a scene of him getting initiated yep. into the uh, gang where he has to fight oh, wow. like another oh, yeah. big male model looking uh, like <laughs> hulking guy. <laughs> so yeah, oh. Stone Cold, put it on your to see list. Yeah. It'd make a great double feature with Warm Bodies. I all, <laughs> get all your friends over, watch Warm Bodies to start off, and is finish there the romance? Night. Well, that's what I want to know. That's you boobs. said there's boobs. There's boobs. Yeah, okay. well, there, there must be romance if there's boobs. There's surely there's sexy scenes. There is a girl in the gang that falls in love with him, and he there promises to get her out. So okay, there you go. I won't go in anymore. Promise. But all right, check good. it out. So okay, I'm I'm sucked in now. Yep. There's a love soul. <laughs> it's, it's a movie rated R. Because it's rated R. Like, honestly, oh. they were like, um, we could either just have this, um, what's called, like, just show someone get shot and fall down. Or <laughs> what they had in the early 90s was squibs, which were little exploding packs of blood. Yeah. yeah. Whoever had the job of making squibs really outdid themselves. <laughs> like, every bullet is an explosion. <laughs> it's a lot of, of fun. So, yeah. <laughs> Love it. If you get a chance, check out yeah. 1991's Stone, Stone Cold. Cold. We're going to jump back into the music. This is 100.5. Wow, I think. 
What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. All the movies, none of the knowledge. This is DVG on WOW FM. In the aftermath of his girlfriend's mysterious death, the young man awakens to find strange horns sprouting from his forehead. This is the movie Horns from 2013, chosen by Scarlett. Why did you choose this movie? Uh, wow, I'm just going to say that's a really basic um, isn't it? Isn't description, it? isn't it? I was like, wow, well, it doesn't give much away. Um, why did I choose this movie? Well, if you uh, tuned in last time with me, you might know that I'm a massive Daniel Radcliffe fan. Um, and I think I used Harry Potter as one of my top yep. tens. Anyway, so this is a really, really good film if you haven't watched any of his other stuff, I reckon. This is the movie to. for me that showed me that he wasn't Harry Potter anymore. Yes. Yeah. This was him. Yes. Because he did a slew of independent movies after to prove just that. Yeah. And this is the most effective because he nails an American yeah. accent. Like yeah. it is unbelievably yeah. seamless. Uh, it is so gritty and dark, this movie. Yeah. Like it really is incredible. Um, so essentially... He is, everyone in the movie believes that he has killed his girlfriend um, and all the local church groups and that keep coming to him saying that, you know, you, you're a murderer, you're a murderer. So it's almost like a, you know, it's it's the big news of the town. Everyone's talking, did he or didn't he do it? Um, one of his best friends is standing by him the whole time and he basically says, I just wish God would punish whoever really did it. Mm -hmm. And the next morning he wakes up and he's starting to sprout horns. But he's also getting the power of everyone admits their sins to him, um, which is amazingly shown in this movie where you get all the characters that he randomly encounters just telling them horrible things that they've done. Yeah. And he also, yeah, just he also gets the power of suggestion. So anything yeah. he says to anyone, they do. They do. Um, and pretty much he starts turning into a demon. Yeah, pretty much. And it's, oh, it is such an incredible film because... It is. It keeps uh, swerving. Like, you keep thinking you understand what the movie's going to be. Yeah. And then it totally changes things up. Well, I don't think I still understand completely about it. Like we were saying earlier, the, the ending part um, just goes, just, don't just give throws you again. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just thinking, I was like, don't say too much. But <laughs> it just, just yeah, it gets kind of weirder and weirder, but darker and darker um, in a really good way. Um, I'm just remembering, uh, like, so how he has the power of like, uh, getting people to do things and stuff. I don't know. There's this scene and he's just slept with this chick and she's like, do, do you think I can have one of these donuts? And then she, yeah. she eats like the entire box of donuts mm. and it's like, I think it is all about, yeah, like their sins and stuff and things that they find bad about themselves. Yeah, pretty much admit their darker secrets and yeah, sins. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically confess to him yeah. their sins. Um, don't want to give the ending away because no. this is a movie that needs to be watched not knowing what's going to happen because that's a huge part of the charm of it. And like I said, if you are sceptical about Daniel Radcliffe as an actor, yeah. I'd recommend either seeing this or Guns Akimbo. They're yeah. both movies where he's so far removed from uh, Harry Potter that you will not argue with the way it turns out. Guns Akimbo, second that. That is such good. That's a newer, I reckon. Yeah. That was like 2019, yeah, like 20, 20, 20, 20, maybe? Yeah, yeah. the start of the, and the he's world got falling like apart. like the... Are they... He, he, there, is a, there is an online reality show where people kill each other, like a death match. Right. Mm. And he, he's an internet troll. So he goes on one night and he has a few drinks and he starts giving the organisers of the game show crap. And he just keeps talking shit and he realises that he's not hiding his IP on his computer. Mm. Oh, no. And so someone from the show writes back his address and he's like, <gasps> so he, yeah. turn, he <laughs> shuts the computer and goes, passes out because he's had a lot to drink, wakes up the next morning and he's got two guns literally bolted to Bolt. his hands yeah. and he's in his undies with like a robe on. And so the <laughs> yeah. entire movie is him versus yeah. the champion because whoever wins the death match 
then has to fight the next contender and it's like the winner keeps going. Mm. Also starring Samara Weaving that we were talking about earlier from oh, Adelaide. Oh, there you go. She's the, uh, right. the main champion. It is such a silly but fun film. Yeah. Um, and I think it was shot in New Zealand because a lot of right. ex-Aussie actors, like I don't know if you guys watched Blue Healers, but the character Nick <laughs> from Blue Healers turns up in there and I'm just like our parents I used to watch that when we were kids it's old old man (laughs) coming on right now here on DVD (laughs) but yeah um, that movie and Horns I'd put them both I liked Horns a little bit better because I Guns Akimbo is a little bit more straightforward whereas this keeps you guessing and uh, yeah it's a really good there's not many movies like this no Mm. there's not have you seen um Swiss Army Man. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah. Madeline, she was raving on about that one. <laughs> That's just bizarre. He's, he Is that your one. favourite fart movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he rides the guy like the yeah, opening over the scene. Ocean. It's the such a bizarre opening movie. scene <laughs> <laughs> is dead Daniel Radcliffe, uh, um, you know, Weekend at Bernie style, being ridden <laughs> like a, a jet ski, <laughs> yes. being propelled by farts. It is yes. an incredible Fine. movie. It is it's bizarre. Good. It's a good one. It is. <laughs> um, have, you've also seen Horns? Yes. Mm. Just not Guns Akimbo. Yeah, no. Yeah. You have to watch Next that one. On the That's list. really good. Yeah. yeah. I've good. just pretty much watched every Daniel Radcliffe every, movie yeah. I can find. <laughs> Were there any one, other ones that stood out? I tried to watch one that was like a, a Victorian horror movie where it was in oh. like a mansion and stuff and it was Deathly boring. Oh, the woman I started. In black. Yeah, that, I started yes, that, that one it. too, and I don't yeah. think I got through no, it either. I was like, nah. oh, "What is this about? Yeah. It is so boring." He's, um, he did this movie. I think it was him, but again, I only watched it once, and I can't remember. But I think it was Jungle or something. That was another one of his recent ones, which was really good. Like oh, that was amazing, and um, he gets lost in the yeah. jungle, and it's yeah, like, right. like a survival. It's like a survival type movie. Um, because I have but, heard good things about mm-hmm. Escape from Pretoria, the movie shot in Adelaide, like oh, last year, oh, the year right. before. Um, Adelaide was used to South Africa because it was a bit safer at the time, oh. but I have heard good things there. It would have been. I haven't gr- seen that one. So yeah. many people got to meet him while he was in Adelaide. Oh like, my I God. always get so jealous. I feel jealous. like I was working and I heard oh. what was going on and I was like, so jealous. And hate yeah. was just, <laughs> just going to go and, like, you know, like meet him and just, you know, make him become your boyfriend, Scarlett. Well, obviously. That- <laughs> loved- I've been planning that my entire life. <laughs> One of my friends was frequenting uh, one of the gin clubs in the city because she heard that Zac Efron was in town and was oh, frequenting no. there. And she went like three sad days in a row and yeah. like on the fourth wow. sad day, she went much later because she was like, oh, you know, he's never there. And the bartender shows a phone on, uh, photo joking? on his phone of him and Zac Efron oh, at the bar oh, and she was so upset. Oh, that's what you get. Yeah. Anyway, let's hear a few ads. This is DVJ. He rode a blazing saddle. We've got to protect our phony baloney job, gentlemen. We must do something about this immediately. 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 Harumph. 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 I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Just the governor. Harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. All the movies, none of the knowledge. This is Dave's Video Graveyard on 100.5 WOW FM. It is Dave's Video Graveyard as we travel back to the year 2014. We are talking about what we do in the shadows. And uh, this is your choice, I believe, Madeline. Yes, yes. Well, um... So I don't, if anyone heard me last time, I am a big um, vampire fan. I'm obsessed with vampires. And um, normally I'm into like the sexy vampire movies. But this one, it's a um, funny vampire movie and it, it's like hilarious. Like, yeah, it, it's incredible. Um, it, it just blows me away, this movie. <laughs> this is, yeah, I think this is top three when it comes to vampire comedies. Yeah. Um, basically from... The guys behind, well, Tiger Watihi, who has just gone on to be one of the greatest filmmakers of our generation. Um, he's so funny. His film Boy is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. He's now doing uh, all the Thor movies, directing all, right, all those. Right. But this is from the writers of Flight of the Concords. In fact, yes. it features Jermaine Clement. <laughs> yes. And uh, it is so well made that they pretty much did a spin-off TV series, which yeah, is just yeah. as popular as... I've only caught a few episodes of the series, but it is just as funny as the movie. Mm -hmm. But this is, it's one of those understated comedies where 
a lot of the comedy isn't necessarily in your face. Like you could watch this movie three times and every time you get a different joke out of it that you <laughs> yeah. missed previously. Um, and it's it's very chilled out movie. Like it's mm. there's a lot of movies where you're like, oh, I'm not in the mood for a horror. I'm not in the mood for this. This mm. you can just put on and chill out and yeah. enjoy. Like it's definitely so funny. Yeah. Like and especially like um, we're talking about the way the zombie uh, genre was treated by warm bodies. This is very similar with the um, vampire mythos in this because it's all done like it's very true to the vampire mythos, but it also pokes fun at it. So you get things like there is a scene where they will go out on the night. They want to go night clubbing, but they can't actually go in any of the nightclubs without being invited in. Yeah. So they, <laughs> there's a lot of shots where they keep asking the, uh, the, vamp- uh, the bouncer's like, yep, you can go in. He's like, mm-hmm. yes, we can go in, but do you want us to go? <laughs> Why don't you invite us it's in? amazing. And, uh, yeah, so yeah. it's so hilarious because it's done almost office style. It's like a mockumentary mm. with a camera crew following them. They end up going to, like, a vampire's ball, which uh, at which point everyone there realises that the film crew are humans. Yeah. And, uh, I just... I love this movie. It is so funny. It's yeah, it's just yeah, it's just unlike anything else. And and like I said, like I'm normally into the the sexy vampire movies, but this is just this is done so well. This one. And the, you know what? There's also a little bit of a love story in this one too. Of There's there a little is. bit of a love of story. <laughs> um, yeah. Would Interview the Vampire be peak vampire for you? Um Oh, look, yeah. Interview with the Vampire, you can't beat that one. You, you can't beat that. But th- this comes pretty close, I think. Like, you know, it's... That's a big call. Yeah. Big <laughs> oh, call. and there's also werewolves in this. So we've got, we've got the vampire-werewolf um, rivalry thing. Um, Played so... by Reese Darby, who is also in um, Guns of... Akimbo that we were oh. talking about as well. Oh. He's the homeless man that keeps watching the show. And then you find out at the end of the movie, he's just been watching a TV that doesn't work. Oh. Like the whole time they keep cutting to him laughing and like, yes, go, go, go. Then you find out at the very end of the movie, he's just staring at a TV that doesn't work. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, he, he's, he's a little bit with the, because you find out that vampires do not get along with werewolves yeah. and it's just handled so funnily yeah, because so good. they encounter each other down by the water, like in a park. And yeah. It's just the funniest bit. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Um, Have you seen any of the TV show? Um, actually, yeah, I, um, I tried, I tried getting into it, I think like a year or so ago and I don't know, I, I didn't stay committed. Like I didn't, I didn't keep, yeah. I didn't keep going. I think because I just loved the movie so much and different actors and stuff. Like I get, I get quite attached to certain actors in things. So what is um, the TV show called? It's called What We Do it in the Shadows. Still, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. It was good. Like maybe I just didn't give it like enough of a chance. But uh, I was just like the movie was amazing. I just felt like you couldn't really beat the movie. The movie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some amazing cameos in the series. Like a lot of really funny comedians turn yeah. up. In a lot of them are in like such heavy makeup that you don't even know it's them at the show. time and stuff. Um, what other vampire movies do you love? Oh, put I you think on I've... the spot. Oh, well, yeah. In- interview with the vampire. Do you like From Dusk um, Till Dawn? Mm-mm, kind of, kind of, yeah. Not as I much. Sixteen-year-old me loved that movie because mm. mm. of Salma, Salma Hayek. Yeah. No, because I love movies. <laughs> probably because of Salma. <laughs> <laughs> we all no, know that probably scene. about it. <laughs> Such a good movie. Mm. Have you mm. seen the movie Bordello of Blood? No, no, that's an old one though, isn't it's, it? Yeah, I think it's like 1996. It. Yeah. It's um, you, there is a funeral home slash brothel and right. you find out that it's actually all the girls that work at the brothel are actually vampires, vampires. Oh, and right. they hide their victims by using the funeral home as the double so yeah. Yeah. um there's a bit where they you see a lady getting her coffin carried at a funeral and no one can lift it up it's yeah. so heavy <laughs> and then the detective opens it and it's because they're like hiding like 10 or so bodies oh, in God. that thing um it, it's a tales of the crypt movie so it's it's yeah. It's very comedic in a okay. lot of its tone, um, but then you the the main good guy is a a really like ratty um, de- private detective, and he teams up with like one of those TV evangelist um, priests mm-hmm. that has all this money and stuff. And there's just an amazing scene where they go into the the brothel with all these water pistols filled with holy water and stuff. It's, <laughs> it's very silly. 
but ah, it's, it's it. very funny and I've a lot of fun. These movies are really silly. I feel like I've seen another one of those tale, tales, tales from the of crypt. the crypt. Yep. Yeah, and it, it's really like kind of cheesy, old yeah, it's, kind of horror. It's it it's almost like the tone's a little bit off because mm. it's it's hilarious at moments, but it, it's it's like really gory in other moments yeah. and stuff. So, uh, and we've just had a message from a good friend of the show, Jamie, who said, lesbian vampire killers no. and, Je- oh, no. and oh, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ vampire hunter, a brilliant plus okay. Abe Lincoln vampire hunter, okay. vampire not. slayer, should I say. So, uh, yeah. Shout out to I'm him for those seen... suggestions. Yeah. Thank Put you. Put those on your list. Put them on the list. What, what about, like, well, you know, what about Twilight? <laughs> <laughs> we, we know I did confess to being a bit of a Twilight yeah, fan yes, last yes. time and that was, you know, came with much criticism. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I wasn't having you back, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have. Oh, I'll turn your mic off. Um, <laughs> See it. <laughs> what about Queen of the Jam? Oh, my Obviously. God. Obviously. Yeah. That was from my yeah, uh, top ten, I reckon, wasn't and it? It was. And yes. you are a burlesque artist, superstar, yes. a burlesque superstar. superstar. <laughs> apparently. The peak of burlesque. Yes. Um, have you done a routine a blood to bath? Forsaken <laughs> oh. by Dave Draymond? Because I no. think every alternative burlesque performer I've ever seen has done an act I to I feel like I've probably second. stripped to it in the past. Yeah. yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah. Look, look it's, it's hard in the burlesque world. You, you really need to sort of pick music unless you're doing like, you know, a, a gore-lesque type thing. You kind of need to pick appropriate music. And I, I feel like um, that one might not be. It's a bit too alternative. A bit too maybe. alternative, a bit too heavy, a bit too scary for people. You know, I don't <laughs> want to turn people off. <laughs> That's well, my job. <laughs> well, let's hear a little bit of music. In fact, let's all get our clothes off. This is David <laughs> yeah. Draymond. This is Wow FM. Looks like you're keeping your body pretty tight. You're looking pretty good yourself. Well, every day's a workout when you got to carry around a 20 pound python in your jeans. You and your dick comments. It's fun to say them. It's fun to hear them. That's why I say them. That's why I listen. All the movies, none of the knowledge. This is Dave's Video Graveyard on 100.5 WOW FM. It is Dave's Video Graveyard, the show where we talk about mindless action movies, but we also do a little bit of poetry. It is time to put you on the spot. Oh. <laughs> Scarlett, are you ready? Ooh. Do oh, you want to go first? first. <laughs> me first. Who would like to go first? I feel like we should put the poet on No, first. I wasn't. I'm not ready. I didn't know this was happening. Oh, well, he said <laughs> we're putting us on the spot. Um, you go first. Me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> are we just doing one? One, two? Yeah. Uh, what would you like to do? It's your show. Well, mine are quite short. Most of mine are quite short, <laughs> so... Mine also is quite short. <laughs> I know a lot of short ones. Um, well, Maddie really wanted me to read this one, and it's just a short one. I've, yeah, I've cut it in half. So let's read this. All right, here we go. Are we ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> you can do okay. it. Would you like one more song to I believe get ready? in you. No, let's do it. Here let's we go. See. All right. Okay. I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, I've got to put on – you know, the reading voice, <laughs> <laughs> and it's making me laugh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You've got to do the click All thing. right, here we go. All right. You give me the chills, but I want to feel you. You give me the feels. Baby, go on and peel me. Open me up. Spread my wings and steal me. And when you're done, go on and leave me. Unsatisfied. <laughs> Woo! Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> See, I told you, click, 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 click. See, mine's <laughs> anti boner poetry. Maddie does boner poetry, and I do anti boner poetry. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm a bad barometer. <laughs> would you like to go? Or would you like to hear a song first? Well, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Right, let's, let's do, do this. I'm ready. Um, okay. Mm. This is called um, Imagination. Get ready for the boner. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is, this is uh, parental guidance recommended for this yes. one, perhaps. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> when I caress my own skin, I often like to imagine that it is your hands gliding across my body, 
and your mouth ravaging my flesh. Just the mere thought of it makes my heart pound and my nipples harden. I gaze at my reflection in the mirror, hips circling, grinding, like honey dripping slowly from your fingers. And I'm reminded of how we both like to watch, how much it excites you, which in turn only arouses me even more. When I bring myself to pleasure, I must admit that my mind drifts to thoughts of you penetrating me. It is your name that escapes my lips when my wild nature takes over. It is you that I so dearly crave. Thanks. <laughs> Still got it. Still got it. <laughs> Well, I think uh, I need to have a quick cold shower, so <laughs> we're going to go to a song. Thank you both so very much. That was Thank fantastic. You. You see you, DVG. You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns and those who dig. You dig. All the movies, none of the knowledge. This is Dave's Video Graveyard on 100.5 WOW FM. It is Dave's Video Graveyard, time for an uncharacteristically me movie that I want to talk about. Now, the reason I'm talking about this one, the man in the chair that does all our research for Dave's Video Graveyard, Jamie, I reached out to him and asked for a suggestion because all of my movies would have just been like stone cold <laughs> if I didn't get someone else's input. Jamie's a very round, uh, very well-rounded film watcher and he suggested this movie, which I checked out over the weekend, and I've got to say, it is, for lack of a better term, bloody delightful. <laughs> so it stars uh, Martin Freeman, who many people may know from either the UK version of The Office or even more so, it is Bilbo Baggins himself from oh, the second Hobbit trilogy. Is. Now, he essentially has cataclypsia, which is a neurolo neurological disorder where whenever he's overwhelmed with emotions, he passes out particularly joy that's one of his major scenes so we set that up a few times throughout the start of the movie like he's playing basketball with his brother and he wins and as soon as he scores the winning point down he goes <laughs> so it, it's it's very light-hearted but he realized he meets uh monica's um barrican i, I can't remember uh, marina baccarin's character mm -hmm. she's from uh deadpool and serenity and he meets her character and there's an instant connection. They've got a lot of uh, really good um, chemistry, but he realizes because of, you know, because he's so overwhelmed by how beautiful she is and how lovely he can't be with her. So he does the good thing and he sets her up with his brother and they start dating, but you can see the undeniable chemistry between him and her character. And basically their romance blossoms against all odds because he doesn't want to, you know, start anything because mm. he's worried of all the things she'll miss because of his, like, cataclypsia. And it's beautiful. Like, it honestly oh. is, you're going to cry. Oh, oh no. <laughs> this you is joking? very uncharacteristic but, of you. <laughs> yeah. it, I know. And shout yeah. out to Jamie. It was his suggestion. Yeah. And I've got to say, this is the loveliest movie I've watched in a very long time. But <laughs> wow. that's not setting the bar very high. I don't want to undersell it because I don't watch lovely movies. But this was, <laughs> this was something different. So shout out to Jamie for this suggestion. And I recommend everyone check this one out because it's, uh, like I say, chick flicks aren't for me, but this movie gets me across the board because it's it's wow. just it's really nice. Mm, yeah. Um, and you know, Monica's, yeah, you know, Marina should I say? Marina. Isn't hard to look at. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> she's if, yeah, that she's bit of a bit of you. a babe, bit of a babe, <laughs> a bit of like a Salma Hayek maybe. No, no. I wouldn't put. Oh, oh is that a bit high? Sorry. Selma's the top Sorry. for me. So. I would say I would say this uh, Marina or Marina or whatever over Salma. Oh, Selma. whoa! How very dare you? Whoa, whoa. Mm. Brit, Kev. Oh, Scarlett. Look at Kev. look at her. There you go. <laughs> Stunning. Whoa! Yeah, come on. Look at that. She I mean, so is Selma, weird. like, come on, but just saying. No, you, you've uh, made your bed. <laughs> <laughs> your mic's getting turned off. We're not putting anyone down like that. They're equal, <laughs> equally beautiful. Why don't you go write a, a poem about me <laughs> shit it, enjoying females? <laughs> oh, my God.
god. Oh my goodness, she's attractive. Did yes. you ever see the TV show V? Uh, the remake of the science fiction. She no. played the leader of the aliens and it kept showing no. her eating rats all the time. No, I was just looking at that. I'm like, what is this from? <laughs> She's still, she still look attractive eating rats. Yeah. She was though. That's I'm what was so weird. <laughs> like, was like... She makes eating rats look hot. Not yeah. that I would do it, obviously, because I'm vegetarian no, no, and you've... that's sick. No, you've committed now. So on your next appearance on DVG, we will be having rats. <laughs> no, but yeah, Fake seriously, rats, right. very uncharacteristically me movie, mm. but Jamie suggested it and I loved it. So mm. that is my next suggestion for this evening. Let's jump into the next one. This is DVG. People think they're seeing ghosts. And they call these bozos who conveniently show up to deal with the problem with the fake electronic light show. Everything was fine with our system until the power grid was shut off by Dickless here. They caused an explosion. Is this true? Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. This is Dave's Video Graveyard. From 2018, we are talking about the movie Zoe. This was chosen by Madeline. Why did you choose this movie? And what is it? Mm, okay, well, this movie, oh, it, I was just saying in the break there, like, this really did something to me. Like, it was just so... Like what your poem did to <laughs> me or something different? No. <laughs> yeah. no Both diff- your different, poems. Di- <laughs> different Thanks. kind of feeling. Um, so... I mean, again, a love story. So I don't know if everyone's realised by now, like I'm a sucker for There's the love stuff. Like I'm a, I'm a romantic. Um, <laughs> but, Massive um, romantic. <laughs> yeah, hopeless. <laughs> it's like sickening. Um, but yeah, this movie, um, well, Ewan McGregor was one reason I, I, I wanted to watch it. And um, yeah, like it's it was just beautiful. And um, it really, it, I think the message of the movie is it kind of shows the power of of the human heart and the power of love. Um, I sound Which like is your message to the world. <laughs> That's literally who you yeah. are. That is the message I like to give. Yes. The power of love. The power of human love. Um, but yeah, and and so sorry to give a little bit about the movie. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a. I guess it's like a science fiction, and I'm not really into sci-fi. Like, no. um, but this is this is a different kind of sci-fi. Um, uh, so for someone who doesn't really like sci-fi stuff, um, this one really got me. And um, yeah, it's this this company they and they make they make like robots. Um, um, They're not sex to... bots. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm um, out. Well, there's, 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 <laughs> not watching it. There's different kinds of robots in in this this society or whatever. But they they start to make these ones that are actually designed to have feelings and to be able to um, be um, companions for humans. Um, and um, so for people who you know perhaps can't find love. Um, they can go and, you know, get one of these robots in their life um, who will never leave them and they'll never fall out of love with them and um, the, the they'll just partner. adore them and, and know everything about them. And, yeah, and, and that's what it's about. But um, I can't really say much about it because I can't reveal yeah. the, mm. the ending and, and, and mm. even, like, the middle of it. Like, you just – you have to get into it. You have to start watching it and then you just – yeah. <laughs> On a different, unrelated thing, do you know somewhere I could buy a robot that looks like Ewan McGregor for reasons? <laughs> Please, yes, for reasons. I'd like to know too. (laughs) (laughs) He is, he's a babe. I don't know what it is about him, but he's got that. He's also got that like Timothy Oliphant thing where age doesn't ruin it. Yeah, Mm. it actually. Oh man, do you reckon you give the rest of us ugly dudes a chance (laughs) by like aging badly or getting a droopy eye or something? (laughs) Like, it's just not fair. He's. No, I feel like he's mm. actually gotten better with age. I think so. And another just really diverse actor, I think he mm. is. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't... Uh, I put him in the same category as Killian Murphy where... Yes. If they Ooh. don't raise <laughs> up... Murphy. If they're in something, it's instantly raised a few points just yeah. from what they just bring to them, the movie. Yeah. yeah. So, I agree. Um, and the, the synthetic robot in this is played by Theo James. We were just talking before we started. Mm. A very Franco-type leading mm. man. Um, almost a bit vanilla in like nothing. Yeah. He's very chiseled, but nothing yeah. about him yeah. stands out. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. He's, he's like attractive, he's but it's kind like of like Like one of the just... other Hemsworth brothers. Others, yeah, like, yeah, there's nothing really nothing about him. It's just your classic it's male just... model. I mean, look, he's yeah. a babe, of course, yeah. but I... <laughs> if you're gonna put him in a movie next to you, and I'm not even looking, yeah. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. Uh, this is definitely not a movie that I would have like 
come across organically. Mm. Christina Aguilera's got uh, a, an appearance in there. I just see. Oh yes, is she, she does. a robot? She and is. Where can I buy one? Oh, oh, she's a sex. A sex yeah, she, she actually of course is. She is. Yes, oh, she's um she um is. she's a, a sex worker. Oh. Um, oh. robot. Oh, robot. Yeah, yeah. Are they real? Can I buy one? Oh, for, well, you for could, research, you can go to you <laughs> to be friends <laughs> with my UN bot. To be friends with my yes. UN bot. <laughs> oh my god! My yeah, goodness. I just stumbled Friend across this two. movie. Like I was just sifting through, like um, yeah. on my Amazon Prime, and I was what like, "Hey, what's this, this? from?" Two nineteen, I reckon. Twenty eighteen. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I, it, and it really, I was okay. There were tears. There were many tears. Oh. I, but not uh, okay. I can't give it away. But yeah. that I was like, yeah, my face was like. You're covered. Your face got oh, wet. Was, yeah, it's just... <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful oh, love story. Yeah. So God. Ewan's... No, Ewan's the real... He's the... He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually like the creator oh. of like the... Of I'm guessing these. he gets jealous that she likes the robot more than him. I'm just getting um, that from no, the no. photos or you're not going to give yeah. anything away? I can't. I can't. I can't give anything away. Uh, fair enough. You keep mm. your secrets. <laughs> right. Just watch the damn movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's hear a little bit more music. Don't forget, it's not too late to join in the conversation. Dave Studio Graveyard on social media. This is Wow FM. Where do you live? In the city. Do you have a house? Apartment. On a rent. Rent. What do you do for a living? Lots of things. Where's your office? I don't have one. How come? I don't need one. Where's your wife? Don't have one. How come? It's a long story. Do you have kids? No, I don't. How come? It's an even longer story. Are you my dad's brother? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 38. I'm your dad's brother, all right. You have much more hair on your nose than my dad. How nice of you to notice. I'm a kid. That's my job. All the movies, none of the knowledge. This is Dave's Video Graveyard on 100.5 WOW FM. Not a five for my money. From the year 2021, we're traveling a long way back now. Uh, We are talking about the film Voyages from this year, directed and written by Neil Berger, starring Colin Farrell, Ty Sheridan from Ready Player One, and Lily Rose Depp, who I just learned is Johnny Depp's daughter. So... We've all learned something this evening. <laughs> yes, we have. Scarlett, why did you pick this movie and what's it about? Um, so I was on the lookout for some new movies to watch and this popped up. Um, this is not really my usual. Uh, again, I'm not a huge sci-fi fan, um, but it looked really interesting from the trailer. So basically what it is, is um, yeah, it's like a space film. So there's um, these children that are genetically created for um, some mission that's set like 60 years down the track. So um, they're like bread, like bread. Yeah, they are. They're like bred and raised in on the captivity ship. on, on the, the ship. There. Yeah. So they've never seen the outside world. And um, one of the big twists is, so basically they're, they've been created to save human race. So they're going to, you know, mate, multiply, whatever, and save the human race. And so the big twist, without giving too much away, is that they find out that um, whoever's in control of them, these teenagers, have been feeding them um, some sort of vitamin thing that takes away their, uh, like, human instinct like responses things that so takes basically all their impulses, out. impulses yeah that's that's it and so a couple of them stop taking this vitamin or whatever it is and uh the ship just descends into chaos and there's some pretty horrific <laughs> scenes it's literally just like what happens when the human races race figures out you know hey i can have sex and i can do nasty things and they've been like they haven't had access to this right. their whole entire life. So suddenly they're just like, what are these feelings? Mm. Like, oh, what is this feeling that's making me feel good? Like, yeah, because they're just basically numbed out their entire life so that they don't have these feelings. Wow. It's full on. It's weird. Sounds like they could have used some of your poetry on the, <laughs> on the fly. Yes. <laughs> I, I was quite interested. Like watching the trailer, it, it's very um, high concept science fiction. Mm. But I was wondering because it looks very sexual and very, very yes. R-rated. Yes. But I was surprised because Ty Sheridan, one of the actors in there, he's usually very, I know him in mostly PG stuff. So mm. I was quite interested to see the kind of role that he plays because. Look, um, I 
from memory, I believe there's like a sex scene and it is between him and I think Lily Rose Depp, the two manies. It's quite, it's quite a gentle sex scene. Only we'll say one that. sex scene? Yeah. Oh. oh, actually, no. Sorry, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Come to think of it, like, they're always, yeah, they're on. always. Well, that's that's the main <laughs> sex scene between them. That's the that's the most PG rated sex scene. Uh, actually, from memory, uh, I believe you walk past, and this is when everyone stopped taking taking the vitamin, and they're all fucking each other, or sorry, um, <laughs> sleeping with each other, and. <laughs> you know, performing <laughs> oral and stuff. So oh, you wow. see all this kind of stuff happening yeah. because they're like, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> what, is, what are these feelings? <laughs> so it's essentially a descent into decadence because they've never had Basically, that before. Basically, I like uh, that, descent into decadence. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there's some murders and stuff okay. and, like, hierarchy problems and things like that. So Colin it's Farrell very interesting. looking like he's got the shits with everyone. Yeah. I mean, Colin Farrell, yeah. yeah. I mean, what, um, he's like the dad role in this oh, sort the of. Dad. And he <laughs> wasn't meant to go away with them, but he does because he grows an attachment to these kids. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ty Sheridan always looks like his nose has been photoshopped on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like, do you remember when you used to cut out magazines yeah. and put different noses on stuff? He, funnily oh enough, God. has, like, a bigger top lip than the bottom, I just realised. Oh, well, well there, there you does. go. He really does. He really does. I'm not going to be able to, um, like, like Tom it's Cruise like middle tooth. Oh, no, yeah, you like cannot see that, that, that now. <laughs> nice. It's a beautiful set of lips. Who would you recommend this one to? Everyone? It, yeah, Everyone. Like I said, I'm not into sci-fi stuff normally, and it just—it was just a bit shocking some of the scenes, and um, I really enjoyed it. Awesome, awesome, awesome! Well, it is time that we get to my final choice this evening. Ooh. This is DVG. This is Dave's video graveyard. <laughs> My final suggestion this evening here on DVG is the movie from 2001. It's now called Joyride, but it definitely wasn't called Joyride when I saw it back in high school. I am talking about the movie that I knew as Roadkill, starring uh, Steve Zahn, who everyone loves from Riding in Cars with Boys. He's also in That Thing You Do, and he's also in all the Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies, for all our fans listening. Um, Also starring Paul Walker, the late great man from the Fast and the Furious franchise, Basically, they're on a road trip across the, um, you know, across the highways of America through the desert and they get a CB put in their car for some fun and they start prank calling a truck driver and they keep messing with him, pretending to be a girl and they uh, invite him to come to the hotel they're staying at and to go to a different room. And so the, the truck driver shows up, goes to the wrong room and the guy that answers the door abuses the truck driver so the truck driver kills the guy oh, and nice. leaves Whoa. so then Crap. they tell the police what happened and the police are all annoyed about it and then they're driving along and the cb goes off and it's the trucky again and so they're like like listen leave us alone it was all a joke you know blah Whoa. blah blah you don't know who we are just leave us alone and he goes you should really get that fixed and they're oh. like what and they said you broke in tail light and so oh, no. it's then Whoa. a chase movie of a truck it's <laughs> A shit movie. Like, it's not good, <laughs> but I've always had a soft spot for it because at the time, I always thought Steve Zahn was going to be, like, funny and in everything and stuff, but he kind of didn't make a huge career for himself. Like, um, <laughs> oh, like I said, time. he's currently yeah. the he's currently the dad in Diary of a Wimpy <laughs> yeah, Kid. Yeah, right. He never really did that much, but I, I've just always had a soft spot <laughs> for this movie. Um, and Paul Walker. Paul Walker yeah, yeah. is... Yeah, like he's playing so Paul young. Walker like he does in every possible movie. Yeah. Um, Lily Zabowski is in it as well. I knew is her she? from Eyes Wide oh, Shut. Yeah. You'd know her. She, I don't 90s. know what else she was in, but she was in, She's in everything. Uh, in the never been she in, is she in that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's in She some, is known for Never Been go. Kissed. There you go, Never Been Kissed. Um, like that'd the, be what I know yeah. her from, I reckon. Mm-hmm. She's like the friend, the dorky friend. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and but yeah, that's my final suggestion because oh. it's just, it's a very 90s centric, well, yeah. 2001, it's very, it come around the time where like Scream's popularity was going down. Yeah. So they wanted to add new spins to it. I think there was like three or four 
movies in the franchise after this, yeah. but I still don't know because it was called Roadkill when I saw it. Why and now it's they known as the name? the name. I'm not sure. That's weird. Maybe because it was too close to Paul Walker or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Could have That's something to do with that. That's not a good joke. That's no, terrible. But it could. I can't believe you said that. Well, I do did that. Oh, I would never <laughs> say that. I just find it strange that they changed the name of the movie. Yeah. I always find that weird. I yeah. never get why it is. I don't know if it's perhaps there's another movie called. Um, yeah. Roadkill that's yeah. too similar. It's mm. weird. Uh, written weird. by J.J. Abrams that went on to be a big, super megastar when it comes to directing Star Wars movies and a mm. whole heap of other stuff. So you check it out if you get a chance. I yeah. believe it's streaming on Amazon Prime at the moment. Oh, great. There like I said, that. it's a trash movie, but I just really <laughs> enjoy it. So check it out. Mm. Now, speaking of checking things out, we are all out of time. Where can everyone check out yeah. what you both have going on? Uh, for me, Scarlett, um, as I said earlier on in the show, most of my stuff is on Instagram, so I'm pretty good at keeping up to date with um, all my upcoming shows and stuff. If anyone is keen on that, you can... Do you can... have anything coming up that you know of? I am oh, at 1910 yes. this Friday night, and I'm on the midnight set, which is really cool, so you can come see me late. I think I'm on... I should check my roster, but somewhere <laughs> around 10 o'clock and then late in the evening at about quarter past 12. So come see me when you're drunk and get nice and loud. Very yes. nice. And Madeline, what about you? I actually just, um, I thought, no, I haven't got anything coming up, but I do. And Scarlet is in this show too. Um, oh, it's July, show. yeah, July 17 at, um, I mean, we'll both be promoting it like crazy on the social media, of mm. course. Um, but it's um, Velvet Chase yeah, Productions. So the, or the Velvet, Velvet Revolver. Yeah. The, um, I think the show is called The Velvet Revolver by mm. Velvet Chase Productions and yes. it's a variety show. So um I'm going to be doing my sexy poetry there. Yeah. Um, Scarlett's going to be doing burlesque. Um, and then oh, what else is there? I think there's going to be um, uh, a Aerial. rope act, yeah. um, like um, like the shibari. Um, I thought you meant when someone gets on stage and pretends to be a rope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rope. I'm a rope. <laughs> it's a performance A rope act. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> Arts, art. Uh, but yeah. Um, so shibari looks so painful. It does. It does actually. Yeah, I um, it. But I then you see some videos and like you know the the bunnies or whatever they look totally relaxed. Yeah, they're loving. Oh it. yeah, yeah. It depends. Yeah, yeah. Each to its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite beautiful. I love it for the aesthetic. Like I love the mm. um. I just think it looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah. But um, it does yes, look uncomfortable so though. <laughs> definitely, everyone come to that. Myself and Scarlet. Scarlet will both be there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I'm busy then. When is it? <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> no, thank you both so much for joining me once again. Thank you for having me. We'll us. be you. seeing you both again, I guess, sometime in July for a vampire special. Yes, we're doing this yeah. vampire special. Yeah. It's happening. And you have to watch your homework. I will watch one of your choices each. Okay. okay. You both have to watch Stone Cold. Stone Cold yes, it is. I'm yep. going to. Yeah, it's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. <laughs> I look forward to it. Well, that's all the time we have for. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget, check out daysvideograveyard.com later in the week. We'll have this episode up in case you missed anything and a whole lot of other things. And, of course, stick around to Wow FM. Head over to wowfm.org. Become a station supporter or even a sponsor. Whatever you may do, everything helps. And it is 100.5 Wow FM.